Welcome to Violin Adventures number 64. Well, this past week was a great week. We had a lot of repairs coming in, which is a good thing, but I didn't get extra work done on our YouTube violin. So today we're gonna have some questions and answers. You guys sent in some wonderful questions and I'm excited to answer them. Thank God for the rain. Well, thank you for sending in your questions. I'm excited to answer these. They're great questions. So we'll start with, from Mike, he says, that's a lot of instruments. Do you know how far, or what is the farthest one of your instruments has traveled? Well, that's a good question. I started thinking about it when I was in Sacramento. One of my instruments went to New York. Another one went to Israel. Another one went to uh, Hawaii, and now here in Kentucky, um, one has gone to Florida, and another one to Michigan. Those are the ones I know about. So actually, I think one went to South America. Are your violins good for classical music, fiddle music, or both? They're good for both. And I would say my customers are half and half. Fiddlers love my um, instruments as well as classical players, and they love it for the tone and for the quick response. He also asked, what is the most common maintenance you perform on a violin? I would say replacing the bridge and setting up the sound post and rehairs are the most common. Okay, some more questions here from Faye. How do you know when a bow needs to be rehaired? That's a great question. If you're playing every day for a few hours a day, then you probably want to get it rehaired every six months because the little tiny fingers on the hair wear off and eventually your bow starts slipping when you play and that means it needs a rehair. Some people do wait until all their hair starts breaking off, but that's really bad for the bow because the tension on the bow is now not even across the frog, but to one side, which causes the frog to tip toward the side that the hair is on, and um, it can ruin your bow. So it's good to keep it rehaired so the tension is always nice and even. So thanks for that question. It looked like the water you used was also steaming. So she's talking about when I was bending the ribs on the hot iron. Yes, you can use cold water, but I like to use really hot water. It seems to absorb faster into the wood. So I've used hot water and I also use a very hot iron. Do you glue the ribs to the shaper? Uh, let me show you. So here's the form, we call this the form, and we only glue these little tiny blocks in the corner. Those are the only things that are glued to the form. So when I, and you'll probably see this in the next couple of videos, I just punch out this form, um, loosen these blocks from the form, and slip this form out. Uh, so great question. Here's some questions from Mel. Uh, what happened to your old violin store in Sacramento? That's a good question. <laughs> well, I haven't been back since I left, but I have friends still back there that keep me updated. And as far as I understand, it is a ghost town maybe. It's like a little ghost shop there. It's a little bit scary looking. <laughs> you could go by and look if you want to see. Okay, uh, next question. What happened to the instruments you left behind that belonged to Albert Muller? I do not know what happened to those. I'm assuming Albert Muller's sons have them and are taking good care of them. Uh, number three, is someone continuing your busy business for all those Sacramento customers? Um, 
at this point I don't know that anyone is taking care of them although I have some of you wonderful faithful customers who send me your rehairs and your repairs so thank you for that you're welcome to send them here any repairs you have if you don't want to do that I recommend Devin Ho, Devin Ho in um, Davis um, that you can sit, send your things to but I love to get repairs and so if you have anything that you want repaired, just send it to me and I'll gladly repair it. And rehair, I think the cost for sending a bow is $15. So it's not that expensive. So I'll, I love to rehair your bows if you need that. And if you need repairs done, send them here. I'll repair them and actually you can watch them being repaired on the YouTube videos. So anyone, feel free to send them. Just leave a comment and I'll answer it, okay? And then so, a lot of you have thanked me for the Hebrew Minute, so thank you for that. I will continue doing that as long as I hear that you guys are enjoying it. Okay, how thick are the ribs when you are ready to bend them on the heating iron? Well, we usually, they start out at about two millimeters thick and we have to take them down to one millimeter that's a good thickness and then if you're really careful you can bend it on the iron but it takes a little bit of practice they do crack if you don't do it slowly and patiently and if you don't yeah, if you, you just have to be very patient and bend it very slowly and then they won't break do you have to bend the linings also or just bend them in place yes i do bend the linings on the heater so that they're just the right um, curvature to fit in here so there's not a lot of strain on the violin. If you could guess how many bow rehairs do you think you've done over the years? That's a good question. I tried to think about that because there were some weeks I was rehairing every day. So if we took an average of say 10 rehairs a month and it, at times there were more than that so let's just say 10 a month times 12 that would be 120 a year and multiply that by 20 years and we'd probably come out that's about 3,000 rehairs. I'd average about 3,000 rehairs. That's a great question. It made me stop and think about it. Okay, we have some more questions. Your violins are beautiful. What type of wood do you make them out of? I make them out of maple from Europe and also spruce from Europe. I like to use the European tone wood because the winters are very cold and so the trees grow slower and tend to have better tone wood. How many violins have you made? That's a really good question. Let me get my book real quick. Okay, now that we're making harps, also I'm including in this number violins, violas, cellos, and harps. Okay, according to this, it looks like I've made 75 instruments and I'm working on a new one, so we're getting close to 77 instruments. And I'm trying to aim for 100, so we'll see if we get there soon. What is the type of glue you use on your violins? Can I just use my yellow carpenter's glue? No, no, no. Only use hot hide glue, the kind you make yourself. There's more reasons than just that it is easy to pop open when you need to. Um, it is the best glue to use to, in order to pop open a seam without damaging and without tearing the wood, but it's also the best glue for keeping the vibrations continually going through the instrument. And if you have a layer, I just call it plastic. It's like when you use other types of glue, white glue, yellow glue, you're putting in a layer of plastic into your violin which hampers the vibrations. So please do not use any type of glue on your violin. Take it to a, 
a good repair person and if you have to repair it use um, hide glue that you make yourself and just a reminder um, so many people end up taking their instruments for repair to a music shop. And sad to say, I have not found a music shop that has qualified repair persons for violin. If they're a guitar repair person, if they've been trained to be a luthier, that's a repair person for guitars. And guitars and violins are totally different instruments and you need a different training for string instruments. So one thing I want to say is there are wonderful guitar repair persons out there who realize that and who send their repairs to a proper violin shop. But a lot of music stores do not realize that and you'll have someone working on your violin who might be a band instrument repair person or a guitar repair person and they are not qualified to work on violins and violas and cellos. So please be careful. I see so many times that a bridge is cut just uh, they just fit the feet and maybe adjust the height but they do nothing about tuning the bridge and making it respond properly to the instrument because they have no knowledge. Also the sound posts are always in the wrong place so be very careful especially if you have a good nice old instrument or an expensive instrument you need to take it to a proper repair uh, violin repair person, someone who's been trained, someone who's just taught themselves uh, many times don't have the proper training. So, all right, you want to make sure that it's someone who has been trained properly to handle your instruments. Enough on that. Um, when you are choosing wood for your, for your violin, do you just look for pretty grain or do you consider anything else? That's a great question. I do want pretty grain. But if it doesn't have any good tone, I won't use it. So number one, you want to have tone on your instrument. Now here is an example. That's the piece of wood you guys chose for our YouTube violin. It has a really nice tone and I listened for tone. Uh, what I'm listening for is to hear that the tone is vibrating throughout the whole piece of wood and nothing is stopping it there's not too much water in the wood and it's ready to go so definitely look for tone and i thought about that i thought okay if i got a piece of wood that had a beautiful tone but there wasn't much flame in it i may not get it so i do look for a beautiful flame but it has to have good tone Okay, my sister broke my violin, I think on purpose. Should I fix it or just get one from Amazon? <laughs> okay, you guys. Okay, that's a great question. Something I'd love to talk about. Here we go. If you're ordering something on Amazon, you're ordering basically a toy violin. Anything under probably $300 is a toy. And why is it a toy? They don't use the proper wood. That's why it's cheap. Sometimes it's not even real wood. It's sometimes it's not even the proper wood. And that's why you can get a violin that's painted blue or pink or white because they don't want you to see what they have under that paint. Please don't buy a violin from Amazon. Not only are you going to have trouble with the pegs, they come in here, people come in here all the time and I have to either rework their pegs or replace them because the pegs usually are painted black and they're not even the proper wood. They're very soft wood, painted black and then I usually have to replace the bridge or adjust the bridge. Your sound posts might need to be replaced. So if you're gonna buy on Amazon, 
Um, just know that you're getting a toy violin and you need to go to a good violin shop to get your instrument. I like to have in stock violins that are that are have a beautiful tone for a low price. So mine start at 400. I cannot find any violins cheaper than that that have good wood and have a beautiful tone. So mine start at 400 and if you're ever interested in getting a beginner violin, just contact me. I will send you pictures and I will also play them for you and let you watch the video and you can choose your violin that way if you don't have a shop that you can go to or one that you trust. So thank you for that um, question. Your violin sounds really nice but mine sounds really bad. Is it me or my violin? Well, it could be your violin. You want to have your violin looked at to make sure that the sound post is in a good, proper place to give your violin a good sound. And if someone has done that and it still sounds bad, well, invest in something that sounds just a little bit better. Here's the thing. If you have a really good sounding violin, you're not going to sound that bad. It's going to inspire you to get a beautiful tone. So if you're doing long, long bows on your violin and it really sounds bad, you probably need it adjusted. If you do long bows and you're getting a nice tone, then um, you probably have a good violin. But just bring it in here and I'll take a look at it and let you know if you just need an adjustment or if you need a new one. We have a few more questions here and I want to save them for our next question and answer. Thank you guys so much for sending in these questions. They're absolutely excellent questions and they're things I love to talk to you about. If you have more questions, leave them below in the comments and I will save them for the next question and answer. Well, I get, hope you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving this week. And Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Just a quick look at our YouTube violin. I did get the ribs shaved down so they're nice and flat. And I traced the shape onto the back of our maple here. But I haven't got a chance to cut it out. So that's just an update on our YouTube violin. Here's our top, which hasn't been glued together yet, but it's ready to be and then glued together. Over here is our the last violin and I'm having trouble so you can see the flame in this violin. It's really beautiful. But it seems to be hard to see on the camera. There we go. So just a glimpse outside Fall has arrived. Bayom hahu yashar hasher hazeh haaretz Yehuda er az lanu Yeshua yashit hamot vachel. And then if we skip down, all these are awesome verses, but we skip down to Bithu Bahashem Ade Ad Ki Baya Hashem Tzor Ulamim. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. A city that is strong for us. Yeshua will place walls and fortresses. And then if we skip down to verse 4. Trust in the Lord or trust in Hashem forever and ever. Because in God Hashem is everlasting strength. Well thank you all so much for watching. And for your thumbs up in your comments. 
I really enjoy reading them. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.